a number five, a number six, we have a dilution. We've added water to something. Now think about this. If you add water to orange juice, there are just as many orange bits in the cup as there used to be, right? The strength of the orange juice has gone down, but there are just as many moles of oranginess in there. It doesn't taste as strong because the strength has gone down, but there's just as many orange bits if you could separate and count them all up. You haven't removed any orangey bits. So, molarity is moles per liter. If you multiplied by liters, you'd get moles. And like I said, if you dilute it with water, you just add water, we don't remove any moles of the chemical. We still have the same number. So, since this times this is moles at the beginning in situation one, and we added water, and this times this is moles in situation two, after we added the water, they must be equal. The moles at the beginning of adding the water is equal to the moles after adding the water. So here's our dilution formula. M of the first time times volume of the first time is equal to molarity of the second time times volume of the second time. Because again, all we're saying is that the moles at the beginning of the thing dissolved equals the moles at the end that are dissolved. What were we dissolving? Sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is part of our strong bases that I showed you in video one. And all the OHs come off in water. We're not going to really care about the sodiums for the purposes of finding pH and pOH, so let's mentally just cross those out. If I could find the molarity of this overall, I'd have the molarity of each individually. Because when this dissolves, you get one of these running off by itself, and one of these running off by itself. If I had 100 NaOHs, I'd get 100 Na pluses running around and 100 OH minuses running around. So let's put in our data. This was the beginning molarity, and this is my beginning volume. What's my ending molarity? I don't know. They don't tell me. What's my ending volume? Well, it's this milliliters plus that milliliters, isn't it? So it's a total of 750. When I divide this under and multiply these, I get M2 is 2.33 E negative 3 molarity. And technically that's the molarity of the NaOH, but it's also just the molarity of the OH minus. Because one of these overall will get you one of those, which I don't care about, and one of these, which I do care about. So the molarity overall is also the molarity of the OH minus. How do we get the P number, the pH, the pOH? We take the negative log of whatever that molarity was, and that turned it into pOH, because I was working with OH minus molarity, wasn't I? So I get pOH. pH and pOH must add to 14, so 14 minus my previous answer gives me the other one, gives me pH. Number seven, what's the pH and pOH? The volume contains 15 grams of one kind of acid and 25 grams of another kind of acid. If you go back and look at our solutions at the top, both of these are strong acids. What does that mean? All the H's come off. If you put an acid into water and another acid into water and all the H's come off in both circumstances, then the amount of H's add up, don't they? H plus does not cancel out H plus. It adds up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the H plus from the first acid and add it to the H plus of the second acid. Well, how much H plus is there? Well, how many grams was there? There was this many grams and that many grams. We'll find the molar mass. We'll divide and find the moles of the acid overall. Find the moles of the acid overall. Except that the anion here and the anion here won't matter for pH. So let's mentally cross them out. And let's just use that as the moles of H+. Because remember, all the H pluses came off. So if I had 50 of these, I would also have 50 H pluses. I'd also have 50 Cl minuses, but I don't really care because it won't help me in my problem here. So I got 0 0.40 moles of H plus and I got 0 0.40 moles of H plus. 
they won't cancel each other out, they'll add up. So I must have 0 0.80 moles of H+, plus, don't I? But for pH purposes, we need not moles, but molarity, which is moles per liter. Well, they told me the liters, didn't they? So I'll take the moles that I added up, divide it by the liters of the solution, and that will give me molarity. To find pH, I take the negative log of the molarity answer, and that will give me pH. pH and pOH must add to 14, so 14 minus my previous answer will get me the other one, it will get me pOH. On number eight, we're going to get even a little more tricky. How many grams of HCl would be needed to be added to the swimming pool to bring the pH down from seven to four? Well, <clears throat> if I knew that the pH was seven, remember, this is the exponent on 10, except the sign is wrong. So what was the molarity? It was one times 10 to the negative seven molarity of H+. Plus. If the pH is going to be 4, what is the molarity going to be? It's going to be uh, using the 4 as the exponent on 10, except remember the sign is wrong, so we'll put the negative back. And if the pH is 4, the molarity of H plus is 1 times 10 to the negative 4. So if I had this, and I want to get that, I need to add enough so that it changes from here to there. That's the difference, right? I need to add the difference between them. And mathematically, the difference between is subtracting. However, the chemists are a real practical bunch, and this is not math class. The fact is that if you do this minus that, this number is literally a thousand times smaller, and subtracting it out is kind of pointless. You wouldn't be able to really notice, so let's just say, forget it. Shh. Let's count this as so close to zero that we can't be bothered to care. Let's just say we got to add this much. Okay, I want to achieve this molarity to get pH 4. What is molarity? It's moles per liter. Oh, look, they told me a million liters, and that's 1 times 10 to the 6 liters. How many moles? I don't know. But this molarity was generated from some number of moles over this many liters. Multiply over here, and you get 1 times 10 to the 2 moles of H+. plus. Where did it come from? It came from that, didn't it? If you needed 100 H pluses, you would need 100 HCLs. Well, I need, actually, I need 100 moles of H plus, so I need 100 moles of HCL. How many grams is that? Well, find your molar mass of HCL and multiply your gram per mole times the moles. The moles will cancel out and will give you grams of HCL that you will need.